I'm gonna lasso Josh into a workout. <laughs> That's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. <laughs>that is me yeah <laughs> that's me yep the man somebody said the last time when we had our pictures on the wall that i was somebody special and i said definitely not <laughs> that's like the farthest thing from it but uh, i do appreciate when people do that for me good good to see you buddy so what do you think i think 2018 19 was when i was at the other building right this is definitely a uh, we've come a long way yeah <laughs> yeah so this is definitely yeah. upgraded uh building so I'm excited yeah. to kind of check everything out because it looks yeah. beautiful yeah thank you very much bro my gym gear dude <laughs> do you ever not bring your gym gear <laughs> hey, listen, I just wanted to say we appreciate your giving us this opportunity to be at your show. No, yeah, no. We, love, we love your show. <laughs> <laughs> you do a great job. I appreciate that. We so appreciate let me walk you around the building, okay. you know, and just kind of show you a few of the highlights and <laughs> that kind of thing. And then we'll go from there. This is our front entrance, our lobby. And, you know, our mission statement is front and center, you know, which is that we empower people with the nutritional products that they need and the knowledge because we're big into education. And we want to help people to break shape and be healthy for life. You know, so everything that we do is based on this mission. We keep it real, real simple. We keep it tight, but it's all about helping people and it's providing products and education to help them get in, into shape and be healthy. I think it's great that you're the living example. Well, thank you. The, you know, the core values, which I think a lot of times people are picking things from the wall or whatever, like, oh, that sounds great. That sounds great. Where yeah. I think this is... Yeah. We're not we're not into a bunch of sound bites. Yeah. You know, we really just keep the mission very focused, you know, and again, it's just it's just about those things. Yeah. This is, uh, this is one of our conference rooms here. We call this the Lean Body Conference Room. Can you guess why we call it the Lean Body Conference Room? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so part of running a company is having a good communication. We have our weekly planning sessions with all of our managers. Of course, then that goes into uh, breakout meetings if we need to talk about something in operations or marketing or whatnot. And then we have quarterly strategic planning meetings. Okay. And we've had those for over 25 years. Right from the get-go, we have always been big on having great communication and having great planning because I think that's one of the prerequisites you know, for growing a company. Yeah, I mean, I think that your point people get caught too far into the weeds on a day-to-day -day basis or just like you know week month quarter like they get forgetful of strategy part and you being around since what like 95 is that 1995 yeah that is a testament that you've yeah. at least been we're a 25 year overnight success yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to somebody recently and we were talking about some of the first brands that I took when I started buying my own supplements. I think initially I went to GNC with my dad when I was in high school and you know, they push like, and this is my era of like muscle tech and like, you know, this is what you need to take or whatever. But when I started buying my own supplements, one of the first brands I bought was Arata. And I was thinking at this point, like you were already in business like, over a decade. I don't want that to like make you feel like you're, you're older or you whatever, like date us. But like at the end of the day, you were been around for so long, even at that point. But to me, that was one of my first probably couple of brands that I bought with my own money, my own supplements. I don't know if I ever told you that or not, but I <laughs> Thank you for that, number one, and, and that speaks volumes about what we try to do, which is to create trust with our customer. Josh, I'll, I'll mention this to you. Uh, we were uh, first in the industry to test every lot of product hmm. that we made. This was before the FDA required it. Wow. Now, now it's required yeah. of supplement companies, you know, by FDA, but we've been uh, doing independent third-party lab testing on products for over 25 years. We're very big on developing trust with the customer. That's why we developed the slogan. It's on the label, it's in the bottle. No, I love that. I mean, I think that what kind of drew me to the brand and now that I play it back, it's kind of interesting because at the time when I was buying supplements as a consumer, like I had no idea that I would be in the industry at all. Like, 
you know, I was a, a business student reading if it was like flex or muscle and fitness and seeing that you were a past competitor and, and kind of having that legacy, but then owning a brand for whatever reason, like I thought to myself, like this is probably a really quality product. This guy knows what he's doing. You know, like it was this like mashup between actually walking the walk and then having this actual thing. And I thought, well, this really is impressive to me. And now it's like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. I thought like that back yes. then, but at the, at the time I wasn't necessarily thinking like that. I was just thinking, wow, this, this guy probably really knows his stuff because there wasn't a lot of brands, I think, that were doing that. There was just a lot of like, you know, the business side or, or the competitor side. There wasn't the mashup of both, right. I think. And, right. and there, had, there was a couple of names, but I think yours stood out for me. Well, we've, we've, we've always been proud of the fact that we started in the gyms and uh, there we gleaned a lot of knowledge, myself included. We learned what works in terms of exercise and nutrition and supplementation. And then we were able to package that up and bring it to the public, you know, starting with my following as a professional bodybuilder. As you know, I was top four in the Mr. Olympia for seven consecutive years back in the 80s. I won Mr. Universe and then was later inducted into the IFBB Pro Bodybuilding Hall of Fame. I had a substantial following and we first started in that community. And to this day, we maintain roots in that community, you know, as we have uh, extended our reach into the mass market and the convenience stores. We're in just tens of thousands of convenience stores already. It just makes it easier for uh, fitness enthusiasts of all stripes to get a good meal on the run. Yeah. You know, a lean body and a piece of fruit and they're all set. I'm going to segue into something you said, you know, that this was the first time that you saw somebody that was from the uh, fitness field then creating a company that sports uh, nutrition and grew and extended reach and such. I'm going to use that as a segue to show you that here is our conference room and here's where we do a lot of the planning and but we're not just suits. Yeah. Follow me. <laughs> This is our Labrada Nutrition Gym. This is beautiful. It's like a secret door. After they beat you up in the conference room, beat you up in the gym. <laughs> Josh, let me tell you, every piece of equipment here in this gym was handpicked by myself and by my son, Hunter Labrada, who is a top IFBB pro and Olympian. I'm gonna lasso Josh into a workout. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be bad. That's gonna be bad. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just a fantastic gym. We've got a number of professional athletes that work out in here on a regular basis. And in fact, for this last Olympia, uh, we literally had four people wow. competing in the Olympia, you know, that were training out of this gym. That's probably a really good environment just to kind of have everybody it really roll. is it's really there's there's a lot of energy in fact uh, you know my son put these clocks up here this is how many days hours minutes and seconds until he competes again in the mr. Olympia it's wow. a daily reminder you know of uh, how much time we have to prepare I love that it's goal-oriented right uh, that's yeah I was gonna yeah. say that's really putting it to it yeah. I mean, like you, you don't want to waste any second or anything when you start to see that clock you're that's like right. all right what am I doing right. here you know that's one of the keys for success in anything and I learned a lot from being a professional athlete and a, and a professional bodybuilder you know, one, obviously, you got to have the discipline to show up every day and do things sometimes and these tasks that are monotonous, you know, yeah. the business of running the business. But the other piece of it, this reminds me of, is that you have to put a timeline yeah. on things to, you know, to reach your goals. You know, I think that that's a, a real important part. I think about things like 30 years down the line where I'm thinking about things like incremental every day I show up and I know that like that puzzle piece I'm stacking one by one by one that's right. will ultimately be this thing where I'm not trying to be shortcuts, not trying to be wherever. And I know that time needs needs to be thought of probably much shorter and I do those types of goal setting as well but I, I definitely think that there's a little bit of like this like accumulation that people miss on they think yes. about this trying to get things as quick as possible and right. especially we're talking bodybuilding or business or whatever it is it's like everything is very much like building on the day and the next day winning that day going on that's the next right one, going on the next that's one, right going on. you or your son like you didn't magically just uh, get stung by a bee and then you got big that's one of my get son's <laughs> favorite sayings is win the day because that's something you just mentioned winning the day and and stacking the next day's uh, goals and achievements on top of what you did yesterday. I use a similar analogy to what you use, which is to say every day you come in and you may lay one brick or two bricks on a good day. You may lay down four bricks and it may not seem like much, but yeah. when you turn back and you look at that, you know, after 25 years, you've got a monumental building. I think it's really important to stay focused, you know, and to work incrementally towards goals every day. Right. You can see the energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, you know, we've got the, uh, the the doors that we flip open on nice days and, and we do, we see, we see the energy. So the lean body protein shakes are our main product, as you already know. These 
have 40 grams of protein, zero sugar. They taste like melted ice cream. I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with the taste. They're, they're the best tasting protein shake on the market. When did you, you know? guys come out with the RTD shakes? Like so the RTD shakes are over 10 years old. Okay. Before that, and it was, in fact, it was the original product with which we launched the company. It was the meal replacement powder. That was the first one. And you know, we started out in a little 2,000 square foot office warehouse space. Just amazing. If it's energy drinks or if it's protein drink, when you start to get into these beverages, you start to move truckloads. And yes. then you also need so much more space because this pallet right. is only worth X dollars. That's right. And then comparable to if this was packed with, say, a bunch of pills. That's right. That's worth way much more. That's right. Uh, people spatially, when they're looking at warehousing or they're looking yes. at, you know, moving into beverages or even food, they a lot of times miss this step of like, they underestimate. Costs start to multiply. It can, that's for sure. And you have to have really good logistics. We've got a fantastic logistics and warehouse team. Everything is done very methodically. The forklifts are loaded with the RFI readers, okay. you know, so that it actually relieves inventory as they pull things off the rack, oh, you know, awesome. so everything's automated that way. It's funny that you mentioned the space because we have been in this building for just right at about two years now, but we're breaking ground on another 135,000 square foot warehouse here in, in Houston wow. this year. Things are growing. That's crazy. That's a, it's yeah. great to see. I love it. Yeah. Originally, and we still carry the lean body and the 17 ounce Tetra Pack. We just yeah. introduced it in a 14 ounce plastic bottle that's going into yeah, convenience yeah. stores around the country exclusively. Now I know why you make a change like this, but it might be interesting for people to know like why sometimes it's in a more rigid plastic over the Tetra that is like that kind of paper material or mm -hmm. whatever. There's actually a reason right behind that. There's several reasons yeah. and you know, and we love Tetra Pak. For us, it was primarily a production capacity issue. We could not get enough line time with the uh, Tetra packaging. So we chose to segregate the business where the uh, the Tetra packaging is used in the gyms okay. and in the core markets, you know, the vitamin shops yeah. and some of the groceries that have healthy living sections and such around the country. But the second piece of it is also that it tends to uh, work very well in the glides in those uh, refrigerator sections of the convenience stores. You know, you have a gravity feed. These plastic bottles tend to work very well, yeah. you know, in the glides. You know, and they're environmentally friendly plastic bottles and that that they're 100% uh, recyclable. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. You also can like stack the pallets like more. So a lot of times when you're looking yeah, at like the, right. the trucks and everything, when you're doing the Tetra, like yeah. you can't stack those that's right. In fact, you know, speaking to your point right here, see, these are the, uh, the the Tetra version right here. We tend not to stack those, double stack those, but you can uh, stack the uh, the plastic bottles. Tell people all the time is there's a lot of these little things like if you don't know, they end up hurting you in the long run. In the they long sure run, can. and you know, and so you're you're thinking about us right here, you know, in yeah. terms of double stacking, but the distributors want to be able to double stack on their floor as well. Kind of just these little things that you pick up in food and beverage that is so much different than when you're doing caps powders pills. Right. Those things are super easy from a format to ship, right. you don't ever get to this like operational efficiency until you start to move beverage or, or foods. And there's so many little bits and pieces that end up losing you. You know, is it pennies? Is it nickels that add up as of the volume? You bet. The benefits or the mistakes could be multiplied by a magnitude, yeah. you know, as the operation expands, you know, so you got to make sure that, you know, all of those systems are in place and that the operation is running as efficiently as possible. Yeah. So this is the first floor of our headquarters. On this floor here, we do primarily the logistics and we do all of the financial on this floor okay. as well. A little bit of the yeah. more like quieter. Yeah, it's yeah. a little quieter. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the place that gets not so quiet, you know, at, especially at lunchtime. A lot of us eat very healthy, so we bring our own food, we heat it up. We got our microwave bank and we heat up our food and we all have uh, lunch together and a lot of times it makes for some lively discussions and we even do some of the planning. Is it no, no fish allowed? Like you're allowed to microwave Oh no, fish? see, they, they know when I'm in the building because as soon as they smell the fish, <laughs> they, uh, right, the boss is in the kitchen. Everybody loves these like open office concepts until somebody microwaves fish. And it's like goes everywhere you're like, no, this is terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> Oh,
told that by a Coca-Cola executive, very, very bright man by the name of Jay Mower, uh, who was a vice president at Coca-Cola. He was a, a Harvard graduate and got his MBA at Stanford. Genius of a guy. He wound up being a professor at the University and of Houston he, for a while. Too. He was a professor at the University of Houston, and uh, and he was one of my early mentors. I was lamenting the fact that there was just so much work to do, and you know, and and, and I, you know, I have a family also. And he goes, Lee. He goes, you can do both. He goes, don't make the mistake that I made, you know, which is sacrificing my family on the corporate altar. And man, those words just stuck with me. They're sticking with me 25 years later. Yeah. If you're effective and efficient with your time, you can do both. You just have to organize your work. You know what I'm saying? And you know, one of the most important things that you can do is to learn when you get to work to turn it on. When you're here, you focus on what you do here. You know, but when you're home, you just focus on your home life and your family. You don't think about this. Yeah. You, know, you have to learn to compartmentalize. And you know, Keith and I, you know, are very aggressively ambitious guys, you know, and but we've learned to master that over over a period of time. Words of wisdom. Yeah. No yeah. question. I'm, I'm just here taking it in. You guys are much more wise than me, so I need well, to you know, I, I, I think we've just uh, scraped our knees and, and our elbows a lot more, you know, and so we, you know, we can share that experience yeah. with you. It is definitely a journey. How fortunate are we, though, Josh, to be in an industry that we're passionate about? Yeah. We have an opportunity truly to provide for our families, doing something that we love. That in itself is a gift. You this know, is why I all, surround myself with such wise, ambitious people. Well, and you as well. But we're all in this journey together. Yes, so we you are. choose the path that you take, and you've yeah. obviously chosen one that uh, lights your fire, which is a good thing. Definitely. It's nice to get up every day yeah. and have a passion for what you do. Mm -hmm. So we don't, That's we right. never take that for granted. In fact, we talk about it quite often. We yeah. do. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate yeah, the conversation. You, you yeah. couldn't yeah. find a finer person. Thank you, Keith. Anywhere, and so I think you're going to find that out the more you discover the different layers. He's he's a good man. Thank you. I I, um, I was thinking when I was driving up here, first time that I met Lee, um, and I don't remember if it was like 2018 or 2019. Randomly, my wife was um, she one of her biggest clients was here in Houston. We were living in Austin still. Instead of staying at home, my home office, I said, oh, maybe I'll just come with you to Houston, and I remember contacting you guys and I said, hey, I'm gonna be in town. And, and I think Lee was probably like, who is this guy? What's going on or whatever? And you know, I show up for the meeting and, and we had a really great conversation and I left that meeting and I thought to myself, you know what, that's probably one of the best guys I ever met. Yeah. Oh, that was like, nice. I, like, I just like literally, it had such an impact on me. It was like, man, that's such a good guy. How didn't I know this guy before that? You know, being in the industry for a long time, I mean, Thank I've you. heard things and, and you know, wherever, but it, for whatever reason, never met in person until that point. And then we had that conversation and, and it was part business, part personal. We just kind of get to know each other. And I left there and I told my wife on the, on the way home, I was like, that's such a great guy. I got to figure out how to like closer to him. Like we got to figure something out because this guy is a really good guy. I just left that feeling that way. And it was off that first Thank you meeting. For that. And, and every really meeting kind. since then, every time we've ever talked, even if it's just like a short text message exchange, I always think to myself, yeah, that's good. Energy. I know you don't want to like, Thank you, I don't man. Want, I appreciate I'm blowing that. up your balloon here. No, but like, I just, listen, <laughs> no, listen, but it's all factual. You know, yeah. they say you surround yourself with people that you want to be like, Yeah, it's a perfect opportunity. We do all of our creative in-house from website to social media, to any kind of point of sale material that we need, you know, whether that's in gyms or whether it's in convenience stores or grocery stores you know so anything that you see awesome. yeah yeah t-shirts everything we do everything in-house we do our own video editing everything creative and you guys have been picking up the pace on that both yes from we a have quantity and a quality yes I've noticed. yeah you're very observant yeah <laughs> I like it though yes, you know because I've been pushing you hard for years to yes like that's right yourself that's right there because I feel that's like right. you uh, far and away are the optimal person to be in front of the health and wellness community yeah and I know that maybe you don't want to be that person out there, but I, I, I think you are the perfect person to be there. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. This is uh, the view of this from the second conference room, oh, which is upstairs. Such a cool so we have a, we have a, we have a view of the Lebrano Nutrition Gym from up here. <laughs> this is nice. I think there's layers of your business that like there's energy that you want to be around and then also like feed off of where that's know, right. If it's the, if it's the warehouse or it's the gym or whatever, mm -hmm. having the ability to kind of see through and have that yes. kind of connection to yeah, it. That's you're right. not just like, you know, pushing a project from point A to point B. It's like, right. there's actually right. lives I, being I, impacted. It's, it's, actually... it's funny that you mention that because see, one of the things that I try to do here is not to have people siloed. 
Hmm. I think it's real important to have communication between the departments. I really like group and team approaches to projects. The people that, that are in operations will know what the people in R&D are working on. Yeah. You know, we have company meetings where we'll literally talk about, you know, the events from the quarter and what we can expect the next quarter. Here's the new products that are coming out. Here's how we're going to market them. You know, and every person in this organization is like a gear in a clock. Whether you're a big gear or even a small gear, if one of them gives out, the whole thing yeah. does not work. You know, and I tell them that your part is as important as anybody else's. So if everybody does their job and does it, you know, with passion and gives it 100%, we're going to succeed. So these are my medals from the Mr. Olympia years, you know, when I was uh, competing, you know, at the uh, top level professionally. This is where I got my roots as a bodybuilder. It's what uh, led me into the sports nutrition business. Josh, this is my office. It's a nice office. Yeah. I could, I could see why you'd like to come in here each day. This is nice. Thank you. You know, I like the uh, atmosphere in here. It uh, lends itself to creativity. One of the things that uh, that I actually particularly enjoy, I don't know if you noticed on the way in or not, but there's a train track over there. Yeah. And that rascal will come by like at least three or four times a day, blowing the horn. And every time that I, I hear that, I go, yes, that is American yeah. ingenuity. <laughs> that is the I engine of our yeah. economy. Yeah. And it reminds me, you know, that we're part of yeah. a great country. Hey, it's okay if we've slowed down a little bit but you know what yeah. we're re-energizing we're regrouping and we're gonna have uh, some just fantastic years ahead of us I love that I like thinking like that because I feel like bringing it to that point it is that that's literally <laughs> the the sound of the economic machine that's right that America is and it's that's um, right that's right it's got to be inspiring you know what I mean it, it is it is not you know and I thought about that because when we first moved in here I was challenged they go don't you get tired here in that train I go no <laughs> So I was thinking about, you're talking a few things that reminded me of something that, that I think people would be interesting to, to hear about uh, in terms of background of, not only background of how you started supplement or actually even chose you know, supplements as, as the business that you wanted to go into, but even going further back than that and just American dream, talking about the train in, in the sense of, you know, a reminder of the of the machine, of the uh, economy and, and everything. And I think maybe that has a different meaning to you than maybe other people. I don't know if people know the story of, of kind of the, you know, Cuban immigrant background, sure. that kind of thing. And like that, sure. I think definitely is a foundational part of you that has now gotten you to this point. Sure. Um, and I no don't you, maybe you've told this story a hundred different times and anybody that's no, maybe a Lee Labrada fan probably is like, bet. oh, I know this stuff. You, but like, you, you bet. I'm glad. <laughs> Josh, I'm glad to share it. Thanks for giving me that opportunity. So um, I came to the United States when I was just two years old with my grandmother, Hermenia. We were joined by my parents six months later and the reason that that all of us uh, didn't come over together is because the government was making it really hard, you know, for uh, Cubans to leave. Part of the uh, challenges that we faced early on, but we were reunited. We started our life here in the United States in 1962. My father was trained as an engineer and within two weeks uh, he, had, he had found work mm -hmm. and you know started carving out a middle, cla middle class living for us. Awesome. You know we were taught early on that uh, anything is possible in America if you're willing to work hard and work smart. You know so my parents both put a, a, a big premium on, on education and uh, you know and pushed us to excel in school and to work hard and that's something that's followed me uh, all my life. I achieved my degree in civil engineering same as my father did and I, I worked as an engineer for a few years before I actually became a professional bodybuilder you know which eventually led to this uh, to the supplement business you know but one of the things that I'd learned was you really have an opportunity here in this country if you're willing to seize that opportunity if you're willing to put in the work and I think that uh, unfortunately uh, a lot of us take so much for granted in this country yeah. and we don't see that opportunity which is really just right underneath our nose it reminds me of a story that I uh, always told my boys as they were growing up you know, I've got three boys and they're now in their 20s and the oldest is 30 and he's a bodybuilding champion hunter yeah you know who's competing in the Mr. Olympia you know and one of one of the top bodybuilders in the world but uh, as, as these boys were growing up I would drive them to school and uh, every morning before they left the car I would tell them be a champion be a champion and to somebody from the outside that hears that you know they go man that's that's a really tough father you know so yeah. I wasn't telling him to be a bodybuilding champion like I was yeah. I was telling him to be a champion and they go dad what's a champion and, and I would say a champion is someone who tries their very best, who gives 100% at 
at everything that they do. That's a champion. And so that's what we were taught early on, you know, and I believe that that's one of the things that has really, um, you know, motivated us to push and to try our best, you know. That was uh, one of the foundational things. No, I love that. That's, that's such a great story because I think that, like you said, you don't want your sons to necessarily do exactly what you did, but have the same mentality sure. that you had sure. to achieve what you did. It, it you could bet. be in anything. You bet. I mean, you know, you're lucky enough that I think at least one of your sons is working here. And oh yeah, actually, actually all of them all are. Of them. Okay, yeah. so then so yeah. I've got one in marketing and I've got one out in the field okay. uh, uh, making uh, sales calls. And then uh, Hunter, of course, uh, endorses our product and represents our product as the face uh, in the bodybuilding community, You know, which we've never lost touch with because that's where we started. Uh, we started as athletes and we're still athletes, you know, and uh, and so that the uh, bodybuilding community, the athletic community is still very near and dear to our hearts. We have uh, pro bodybuilding that work out here in our gym. We have professional athletes, professional football players that come to work out here in our gym. So we've never lost touch with that. But at the same time, we realize that the knowledge base that we have and what we've learned along the way, you know, has uh, helped us to develop world-class products that can help people from all walks of life, whether they're athletes or not, you know, school teachers, busy executives, you know, stay-at-home moms. We're there for everybody. That's why we say lean body for everybody, you know, and that's what our lean body uh, products are for. You mentioned, you know, from the pro bodybuilder side and you guys have the pro series and then you have the lean body and then there's right. kind of a you know the labrata nutrition right. in between talk about like the i guess the evolution because i think not to say that everybody's always going to progress up to that pro sure. level sure. product but you are providing a suite of of different entry points for people that's based a, around what a, their needs or wants or intents are you know we have a line of products that specifically caters to the bodybuilding and athletic community the professional athletic community and that is our labrata a pro series and so uh, what we did when we were designing that is we sat down with my son Hunter we sat down with athletes and we said okay if these products if this protein if this pre-workout you know if if these uh, amino acids these products you know if there was no cost constraint what would these products contain and so, because a lot of times what happens is companies have to cut corners yeah. you know because otherwise the product is so expensive by the time it gets to retail that they're afraid that they'll lose the bulk of their audience and they're right you know but for for the discerning professional athlete, we wanted to design products that met their advanced needs because these athletes train so hard, you know, that they, that, and their needs are so much different than the average person. We wanted to make sure that we had efficacious doses of the ingredients. And so that's, that's the birth of the Pro Series. And we think of our Pro Series line the way that, say, Ford Motor Company thinks of their racing team. Yeah. Okay, they're never gonna put everyday uh, passengers in their racing cars. But that is where they develop the technologies that sometimes make it into their passenger car lines. You know, and that is the place where they uh, test everything. It's just on the cutting edge. Yeah. And so it's very important for us to maintain our roots, even though that's a smaller, today it's a much, much smaller segment of our, of our audience than it used to be because we're transferring a lot of that technology and making it more mainstream and we're going Going from what I call going from the island to the mainland, we're never going to lose contact with the uh, with the island with the uh, professional athletes. But at the same time, you know we have to take our best practices and we have to adapt them. We have to come out with products that meet the needs of the average consumer. Those that are trying to lose a few pounds and get into shape, you know, they need products they can trust. And that's been the evolution of the uh, Labrata and the Lean Body products. And in fact, I've got some of the, the shakes right here, including my latest flavor, I'm excited about which that is one. the chocolate peanut butter. I saw you looking at I've it. I've been eyeballing it. Uh, I'm a chocolate <laughs> peanut butter guy. That's, yes. my, that's my thing. Yes. It tastes like a like a liquid peanut butter cup. And we just introduced that one just, uh, gosh, just a, uh, an, a few months ago. What do we always say, Grant? Side channel. And I'm the worst at giving my opinion <laughs> but this is really good this is great again quality content maybe coming to a side channel near you how do you tell somebody what it tastes like right you know, it's, it's a little difficult to describe but I can tell you that it doesn't uh, literally taste like a liquid peanut butter cup it's, it's yeah. always a joke because when um, 
when people send me products, um, because I don't do like reviews, like, uh, you know, a lot of people are interested to understand how certain thought leaders think about these products based around formula or taste or whatever that is. And these review channels obviously do a really good job at that. But when people send me products, it tends to be that they're looking for really intricate, um, I guess, advice on how to dial in flavors or, you know, move up acid levels, do these types of things. And right. Because of that. You have to be a flavor time. Because of that, I always tell people when they send me finished product and they go, oh, tell me what you think I'm like I don't think you want me to tell you what I think because <laughs> the product's already done. Yeah, you already so at, that, there, right? so at that point I'm not the best like review person. So then when I do try a finished product, I just go as like oh, that's good. That was good because like <laughs> the, you know no at that point it's already done. You know it's already right, kind right. of at that point. So it's, right. is, is it, does it meet the standard of the uh, of the market? I think that's where this yeah, moves into a different thing. When it's in development, then you question. can be hypercritical on flavors. Yep. And is that you know sweeteners or ingredients or if we're talking even you know things that could be carbonation levels or whatever those things are, that's the time to to be ultra critical but then when the product is done it goes you know from a purchase criteria standpoint does this meet and i always say is it within the top 10 percent of that category and that yes. flavor and if it's a yes then that already meets that um Threshold. criteria yeah. so then you then have to worry about taste you then have to think about it as a, you know is the availability there is the price point right is the you know other elements because at the taste when somebody tries it they're going to try that product and go that was great. I instantly probably want to buy it again as long as it's available to me and it's priced effectively. Like that's going to be the, the decision criteria that they make then. It's not going to be off of taste. So then it goes back to the, the review of it is much different when it's finished. Yeah, when it's, it's finished. Yeah, it's like, oh, that, like to me, I drink it, I go, that was great. I would want to pick it up again and buy it again and buy right. it again and buy right. it again. And this isn't, you know, it's been sitting out for a while as well. So it's not like, you know, the optimal cold, you know, those types of things. But I do, um, and I'll say this because I've drank, um, I don't know how many metric tons of, of lean body before, but um, I have tr <laughs> I have drank them both when they are um, room temperature yep. and when they're cold yep. and they're great all the time, which I think is the testament to a ready to drink product because in the perfect world, you want to be able to grab it from the cooler if it's right. at the convenience store right. or is at the but gym. If it, but if it tastes good warm. But if you also, I think because this is portable and you want it to actually be convenient, like if I throw this in my you know, gym bag or I throw that in my car and I don't get to it in two hours and then I try it and it tastes gross, then it doesn't actually meet the threshold of like that convenience level or that right. whatever. Then, right. you know, you then have to think about how do I control that element or That's so. Right. That's right. You travel, you really can't take liquid with you we yeah. have the uh, uh the mrp package. sachets yeah. yeah you know so really a a, a very versatile product and uh, that's what why we call it lean body for everybody i love it yeah now i want to ask you a question sure um, because so i was trying to play this back and and uh we're looking at 95 when you started the company i wasn't around in the industry at that time but being a student of the game i know that it was much difficult in a way of like how to manufacture how to sell the products like the barriers to entry were were higher to the space on the flip side now they're lower but then there's more competition. So like right. it all kind of like balances out. Sure. When you're getting into thinking about from an entrepreneurial standpoint, like what do you want to do? I mean, you could have done all kinds of things. Um, why did you choose supplements? Like out of- That's a really you know, good what, question. Like you could, I mean, you're a smart guy. You had a, a marketable brand at the time. You could have done all kinds of things. I mean, uh, I know that playing it back now, it makes sense. But like at that time, were there other things you were thinking about? Like, oh, maybe I could do this or maybe I could do that. You know, those things run through your mind, you know, and especially as you're a professional athlete and you're nearing the end of your professional career. You see, Josh, when I was 25, I won the IFBB Mr. Universe. And by the time I was 26, I was competing professionally. I won my first professional show. And I went on to uh, compete and I, and I placed top four in the Mr. Olympia seven consecutive years. But I told my wife when I was 25 that I would be done with professional bodybuilding by the time I was 35. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt that that was long enough. And so towards the tail end of my career, you know, I started thinking, okay, well, what's, what's my next act? I'm going to have to do something. Well, where are my strengths? I, and the answer really was this. I had worked with, uh, with some of the world's largest supplement companies at the time. You know, I had worked with Weider Health and Fitness, which was one of the largest supplement manufacturers in the world. And, and then I was one of the four founding members of Metrics. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, cut my teeth there, learned a lot about the supplement industry, and I felt that I could do a better job than what I had seen at these other companies. And I knew what I wanted to do differently. And, the, and so we developed the Lean Body formulation, you know, and we launched in 1995 out of a little 2,000 square foot office warehouse space. 
You know, my dad would literally uh, uh, be sitting out there in the warehouse packing pa uh, packets of lean body into the box, along with uh, Gary Glass, uh, one of my first employees. And uh, in the office, you know, we had uh, a couple of employees helping me do everything, basically. You know, the marketing, the operations, everything. Uh, at night, my wife would come in and do the books, and I would stay home with uh, with our young boys while she did that. So it was very much a uh, a shoestring operation, you know. And 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 we've developed over the last 25 years we've developed into the company that we are today you know with uh, distribution all through the United States distribution in over 30 countries we have a manufacturing plant in India that actually manufactures our products mm -hmm. for the Indian market not the RTDs but all the powder products for that part of the world you know and uh, and of course we have our manufacturing here in the United States for our other customers I've been on this like kind of um, thing where I'm talking a lot around you know if it's creator power package goods or celebrity package goods or this just this idea of like talent led or influencer led type of brand and it's become such a important part of the consumer package goods space just because of we talked about the competition and just the amount of noise and everything and people sure. are trying to figure out how do you cut through some of that and having a strong distribution voice like somebody that has a platform already it's easy to do that but if we roll this way back to the 90s I mean you were way ahead of your time because you were literally that person doing that but it wasn't called that and it wasn't you know there was no such thing as an influencer there's no such thing as a like you weren't calling yourself I, I a celebrity if, you weren't I, kind of, like i think influencers were around we just didn't call them influencers, yeah, you, you right? yeah, yeah and i think it's it's interesting because like you were one of the original people that did that if we play it back you were kind of one of the originators yes and then also had the longevity and had the staying power this long where a lot of these are you know shooting stars where they they catch wind in their sails and they grow really quick but then they crash that's right where since 95 you're still here and like there's not a lot of brands in the whole industry that have been around since as long as, as, yeah. as long as we have and you know as um, as I've mentioned before you know it wasn't always uh, smooth sailing we have had a, a lot of experience us uh, you know and some of it hard experiences you know getting through uh, tough times I mean the latest one was 2020 yeah. you know when uh, when we had the uh, COVID shutdowns you know for two months there you know our sales literally went to half like a uh, aircraft carrier you know it has a lot of mass and it takes it takes more than a, than a few hits on the side yeah. to take it down so we weathered that and we ended up actually finishing up with a good 2020 uh, the last couple of years have uh, have just been record years you know yeah. but it, to your point you know you got to have resiliency you know and I think that that's one thing that being a professional athlete does teach you is the ability to do things on a day in day out basis do repetitive things things that are hard and do them repetitively do them well towards a greater goal you know you and I talked about about how going in and working at your business doesn't seem like much on some days but if you're building a brick wall and maybe you're only laying down one brick that day yeah you know and then on good days you might be laying down six bricks you know but over cumulatively over a period of many years when you look back you have built a monstrous structure yeah you know because again uh, aggregating all of your resources aggregating and focusing your resources and your energies you scared about the workout yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna put him through the ringer. If, if there's like the average Joe below the average Joe, so like. Uh, nah, I don't see no average Joe. I see a Josh. Yeah, <laughs> average Josh. <laughs> Did you want to just do a bunch of different things? I think the original thought was to try to fit the idea of busy professional, yep. or maybe you are somebody that is even maybe on the road traveling, those types of things. Like, what's that mindset going in? Someone that was short on time, what I would have them do, one, work with machines, which you'll see that we got a lot of in here. And the reason for that is it's just easier, especially for somebody that is just starting out, to learn on the machines. And the machines nowadays are made so well. You know, it used to be that the free weights, that, you know, nothing touched them, right? I am still a proponent of free weights. However, the machines have gotten so good that they really work very well, especially for somebody that needs to do a circuit that, you know, which is what I recommend for somebody that is pressed for time. You know, so it would just basically involve doing a an exercise or two for each body part in sequence, you know, and getting a, t a total body workout that way. When they're doing a circuit, this is creating kind of a, like a jumbo set of like having, you know, a shoulder machine, a back machine, a chest machine. And sure. Act, like and do it, but don't do three sets of one, go to the next one, or do you, or would you rather? You know, again, it, it depends on the level of fitness that the person has and what their goals are. You know, if really all they're trying to do is to stimulate and burn some calories, then I'll have them do it in the sequence that you said, you know, just one, one, 
one like that and just mm -hmm. go through the whole circuit. You know, if it's somebody that's trying to put on some muscle mass, basically what I call the tone and build, then I would have them do multiple sets of one station before they go on to the next station. Something that is important to realize is that you want to breathe long enough to catch your breath in between sets, regardless of which one you do. I know everybody probably has excuses for certain things like, oh, well, I don't have an hour of my day that's like I could block off or maybe I sure. don't have whatever. And maybe they don't have, you know, this own facility. And even in my house, like I have a home gym in my garage sure. or whatever. We probably have the luxury of doing that. But then I think you don't need to think about it as like, do I have an hour block off? Like even sometimes uh, maybe I need to do this more. I'm not the best at it, but I will see, oh, I have a, a, maybe 45 minutes in my schedule. Should I get out and start to move and, and do things instead of sitting at my desk or whatever? And I think yeah, that yeah. what you're kind of mentioning is the perfect idea to do that. There's a couple of things here. Okay. So one, people will say, I don't have time to block off an hour of my day. Okay. But here's what you have to understand, whether it is an hour or whether it is half an hour. Okay. You need to make room in your day to exercise or get some kind of motion going. Okay. Because if you don't invest the time in doing that, you're going to spend that time later on visiting the doctor, you know, and as you get older, you know, more hospitalizations and things like that. So you're going to pay the piper sooner or later, yeah. you know, so you might as well invest in, you know, keeping your body up, getting a higher quality of life for a longer period of time, increasing your longevity. See, a lot of people think of working out as I'm spending my time. I don't think of it like that. I don't think of it as an expense. I think of it as an investment. Mm. And it's an investment in yourself that pays off because, you know, a guy like you, you have a wife, you know, a guy like me, I've got a wife, I've got kids, grandkids. What happens is I know that if I don't invest the time and I break down, I'm going to spend time in the hospital or I'm, or I'm not going to be around. I'm not going to be able to take care of them. Yeah. So it's not only an investment in me, it's an investment in them. So that's one thing. Okay. The uh, second thing is that you were right. You know, if you can't make it to a gym, okay, then at least get some calisthenics where you are. Okay. Anybody can do, you know, uh, squats with their, you know, free body weight. Okay. Anybody can do push-ups. Okay. Anybody can do crunches, you know, and calisthenics right where they're at. Somebody said this once, it might be, um, Ryan Buckeye. He said, if there's a floor, if you have a floor, you have a gym. Yeah. That's all you need. That's like, right. That's right. <laughs> I was like, want, that and, makes sense. Yeah. And if you want to get fancy, <laughs> yeah, uh, you get some bands, you know, but you'd be surprised how, uh, you know, how creative you can get when the equipment is minimal. You know, lean body and, and how, I don't want to say an entry point, but it's definitely in a more approachable That's um, right. product. And those people maybe are not as you know, educated as you in terms of like sure. fitness, health. Sure. What do you do? We're real, real big on that, Josh. You know, in fact, uh, that's part of our mission statement, as I mentioned earlier, that part of it is to educate people, not just give them the products. The products are good. The products help to support their journey to get into great shape and stay healthy. But we also want to provide education. And so we've been doing that for many, many years. In fact, we, you know, we've had uh, our newsletter for over 15 years. We've got a website, labrada.com and leanbody.com that has videos. It has articles. You can subscribe to that. In fact, on the side of the Lean Body Ready to Drink Shake, there is a QR code okay. that they can scan from their phone. And that is a starting point. That's an entry point because once they scan that, they go right to a page where they can sign up for all of these free resources that we have to teach people how to work out and how to eat right. And uh, I mean, there's just so many resources there. There's so much a part of the process of getting somebody from point A to point B, not just going to be the supplement. I mean, just the word supplement, people need to take it for its base value because it's really supposed to be supplementing That's great right. diet. It's supposed great, to be su you know, supplementing the food. Working That's out, right. you know, sleep, all those types of things need to be there. So it's good that you guys are talking about that because I think for whatever reason, people have gotten this idea that supplement industry is this like magic pill Yeah, thing, no, they're not. It's they're, not. I mean, they're, they're not. They're not. Supplements are just that. They are supplements to whole food intake. They're not magic pills. You still need to eat correctly, have a whole food diet, and you also need to exercise. So that's really important for people to understand. But what we help them do is to help them stay on their program, on their nutrition program a lot easier because let's face it, you know, not everybody has time to cook chicken breast or fish yeah. four or five times a day. The shakes have 40 grams of protein in it. It just makes it a lot easier yeah. to stay on a properly balanced diet. So I think of it as a tool. But again, you can get protein from whole foods. And in fact, we encourage people to eat whole foods. We encourage people to exercise. It's all part of a holistic program. Where I grew up now is that I'm not a coastal elite, that I only think about things that happen in New York or LA or Miami. And, and there's this idea of trends and how quick those things emerge. Are you sore from that workout? Be honest. Yeah. <laughs>
I told Lee to take a little bit easy on me and he obliged a little bit, but even him taking it easy on me is much more of a workout than I normally get as this like we joked like regular Joe or average Joe is like regular Josh like he doesn't work out like that anymore. I told everybody I think on episode what was it one that I was not going to show any more workout footage and here we are again already showing more workout footage so I guess I broke that word of mine. I'll try not to do it again. Maybe never again we'll show workout footage. I'm going to lie probably again we're going to probably show some because I think that's the great thing about the fitness and health um, kind of wellness industry as a whole is like everybody this is the life they live and, and because of that you want to break bread with them in a different way, but also you know kind of work out with them. I think there's a way to bond and whatever, and I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity to uh, work out with Lee Labrada. I needed to do that. So it was a great experience. I came to their last office maybe three, four years ago. This office is definitely a step up. It's really great. Um, as Lee said, they're building another facility, so they're growing like crazy because of the lean body shake. I'm gonna be snagging a bunch of those and bringing them home because that's a personal favorite of mine. If you guys haven't tried any of the lean body shakes, this isn't me like, you know, use code Josh, but. Um, what I'll say is you need to check them out because they're great. Overall, the hospitality was amazing. I know that I keep probably saying that, but I only surround myself with great people. And Lee is, is one of the best. Uh, I've mentioned this a multitude of times. Literally one of the best guys I've ever met. And he was happy to kind of welcome us in and show everything. And, and I'm super excited that you guys are going to be able to get a sense of like what Labrada Nutrition is about, Lean Body, and, and just kind of the Labrada Pro Series and all the things they're doing well above and beyond just the products. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So this is episode four, episode five. I always say I don't know when the hell that's gonna happen, even though getting a little bit more quicker here. We're getting to a little bit of a groove here, me and Grant. Um, and as I normally kind of say, I'm trying to be the YouTuber in me here. You, know, you guys gotta smash that like button. You guys gotta subscribe. You guys gotta do all the other cool shit because I'm gonna keep putting out content. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this. Oh.